G'day, how's it going? And welcome to another episode of Test Drive. I'm your host, TK, and today I'm joined by Andrew Schaffsmart. Andrew, introduce yourself. Um, yeah, hi, my name's Andrew. I've been working for Syndeticom come nearly 10 years now. Um, uh, I'm the ICT Solutions Manager for mainly structured cabling and data centers. Basically what my role entails is to, to make sure that I'm across all the product sets of all the different vendors that we have um, and making sure that I understand exactly how they go together to be able to let our clients, uh, to be able to design for our clients exactly what they need as far as their solution is concerned. Yeah, so my background is that I was an electrician when I uh, first uh, first started in the industry, so back in 1993, and through that I've made a progression for structured through structured cabling. Structured cabling has been something that I've been passionate about, and learning more and more about it uh, is, is what, what gets me going. So from being an electrician and moving into structured cabling, I've slowly made my ranks up into the office, um, did a lot of estimating. Now I'm growing my career into more of the design and implementation of the structured cabling in customers' networks. Thanks for the insight, Andrew. Now, uh, what do we have here? So this is the Edge 01U SP Fobot. A Fobot is a fiber optic breakout tray. Mm. Um, what it is mainly utilized for is for, for getting fiber connections coming in and to be able to patch them out. So we've got either trunks or we've got fiber cables coming in to be spliced and this is how you're going to present them for patching into equipment. Yes, so it's this is using... used in, in data centers as well as fit out and construction, mainly in the data centers, especially because this uh, this model or unit is a high density unit so it allows for a lot of cabling to go into the front of it so 144 cores whether that be an edge 8 or edge 12 um, is just in the trays and how it all goes gets put in together so in a standard rack it, normally if a standard rack is 45 RU you can have up to 45 I, one RU Phobots in there. 45, wow. Yeah, that, which is a lot, a, a lot. You wouldn't have that many because you still have to have cable management in there. Yeah. Probably traditionally, we're probably only looking at around about sort of five or six Phobots maybe as max in the in the, the top of it, unless it's a cross-connect rack, which will then be all fiber uh, okay, that's yeah, going yeah, into yeah. there. So the beauty of this unit here is that, it, it, like I said, it has 144 cores, so it's considered high density. So for all of the equipment that you have, for patching into the NICs or into the QSFPs and SFPs, there's a lot of capability of putting fiber into this to be able mm. to do that. The first thing that you'll see is if I push this little tab down, yep. is this is the actual internals. So what we have here is we've got three trays, as you can see on the front. So what we've got here is we've got the front plate, that on here has got some really good labeling on it. At the I moment, see, yeah. it is set up, you can see it's set up for an Edge 8. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six cassettes across the front. Yep. And you've got one, two, three rows going down. So so there's also, there's. I'll show you with the first tray. The first tray is actually not an Edge 8, is it an Edge 8 tray. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six cassettes going on the front. Mm -hmm. If I pull it out a little bit further, you can see we've already preloaded some of the cassettes into here. So this is an LC cassette, so you can see they've got duplex LC ports, one, two, three, four, which allows for the eight cores that are going into the back of that. And then we've got some different types of cassettes here as well. So this is an MTP pass-through cassette. So, it oh, allows... so these are MTP pass-through cassettes. Correct. Yeah. So, so when we talk a little bit later about MTP, you'll notice that the MTPs will actually plug into the front and into the back of it. This is allows for high bandwidth solutions. So anything from 40 gig up to uh, up to 400 gig at the moment. Okay, 400 gig, that's the max. That's that's where we are at the moment. Yeah, at the moment, it. yeah. So yeah. it's still going to be growing and growing, depending. It's it's more uh, on the vendor solution of the actual equipment yep. of what they can actually push through. As you can see, this is for the Edge 8 solution, so it's quite mm. easy to come into it. You can see that for patching into it, it'd be quite easy to do. Yeah. Then if we push this back in, which I will do, you have all your patch leads nicely kept inside there. They'll be patching through on the sides out here, and as the lid goes up it's all nicely managed in there. I like see. I said, the actual labeling goes on the inside, so when you're actually working on the Phobot, you can understand where things are going from, depending on how we set up the labeling. Um, the next one that we've got down here, we've just, at the moment, just done, this is not very usual to have Edge 8 and Edge 12 in the same one, mm -hmm. but this is the Edge 12 tray. 
that we've got in there, which all these trays can be pulled in and out to suit. So it's actually quite plug and play how you want to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And these are the Edge 12 cassettes. So once again, you can see we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. And these ones here, the, the light blue is the OM4 and the uh, dark blue here is the single mode that we've got in there. And this one here, once again, is that MTP pass-through cassette. You can see on the tops here, mm -hmm. very easy labeling on the front of the cassettes. So once again, you've got quite easy, uh, an easy way of dealing with how you're going to be patching in and where the actual cores and where the actual ports are going to be going to be managed going into it. Mm. Um, the beauty of these cassettes is that not only can you pull them in from the front, like so, they can also come in from the back, but we'll show that a little bit later on when we, when we talk about the fur case. I in see. The back. So, which is great, especially if you've got already something plugged into this cassette, let's say, by pulling it backwards, you're not gonna, going to actually uh, make, you're going to make sure that you're not going to actually disconnect yeah, the just, existing yeah. fibres that yep. are on there at the, at the time that, that we're doing it. So we'll pop that back in. So the last tray is exactly the same. So, so what we might do now is we might have a look at the back of the Fobot and just see how the cables go into the back of it. We've got some nice, Easy catches here to try and to, to make sure that the Fobot will pop off. So we pull it off. Mm -hmm. Inside the back of the Fobot, we've got these furcation trays. The furcation trays are for when we bring in the trunks, which we'll show you a little bit later on. When you're bringing them in, it ties them down so that we make sure that we've got no actual uh, uh, vibration or any movement in that cable, so it will be secured and be set in there the whole time. These furcation trays will also turn 45, sorry, 90 degrees. So if you've got cabling coming in from the backside or you've got cabling coming in from the side, we can all, we can change those to suit so that you've got the proper furcation or okay. the proper connection that we're going to be able to clip them into it. Now you can see the back of the, uh, of the cassettes here. And as we were discussing earlier, the cassettes will come out from the backside as well as the front side. So if I pull that way, I can pull the cassette out of the back as well as pushing it out of the front like we saw earlier. Yep. Which makes it nice and easy for either way of installation, especially when you're in tight spaces, you might not be able to get to the back or you might not be able to get to the front very easily. Yeah. That allows you to do both sides. it depends on the space, sides. yeah. Depends on the space and it depends on if you've got, like, like this one, we've got a connection in it already. So we don't have to worry about the connection that's going in there. We can just, quite easily, we can pull the cassette out without any real problems on the cable. So we can easily just reconnect in without disconnecting the cable. So that is the Corning Edge 01 SP Fobot. If you enjoyed today's video, give us a like and a comment and subscribe. Thank you again for watching Test Drive. I'm DK. And I'm Andrew. See ya. See you later.